So yeah, the, mine's a little bit dense, but it's short. So we'll go we'll go right through it. Um, I've been doing Rails for about seven years now. I'm a uh, AWS Cloud Solutions architect and a consultant for for different companies building Rails apps and prototypes and and uh, their AWS clouds. And then this is supposed to work, but not really. All right, it's actually a mailbox. And um, so it's a framework for passing, processing inbound email. Um, let me just get what works here. Um, nothing makes sense without a font awesome logo anymore. So it's like first thing I start anything, I start looking for like a font awesome logo. I realize that I'm spending way too much time in front of the machine. Um, they also just call it a library to receive emails in a Rails app. Um, you know, this look just looking through who wrote this, it's um, a lot of this guy, George Claghorn from I think he's Basecamp and DHH, and a lot, of course, a lot of other people contributed to it. Um, and what's great to see about it is just how it's made possible by some of the other features in the framework. So you have like, they're using active storage and they're using active job and without those parts, this wouldn't really be possible. Um, and the, the classic use case that everyone talks about for, these, for this email processing is what, you, what happens when you do a GitHub pull request and then you, you get an email or when there's a pull request on a, on a uh, repository that you contribute to, then you get an email and uh, you can reply directly to it and then it will post to GitHub. So it's basically like these use cases, a lot of them are for, or that have come up so far for like slow adopters, people who um, aren't going to log into your app, but you need them to comment on this project or whatever. We use it in this case with, with yeah, our slow adopters are like, we have a VIP person who can't be bothered to log into the app and like comment, so they'll just send an email, and then we can capture them and 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 post to the post to the app. But there are a lot of uh, advanced use case possibilities of this thing. I mean, it really can um, do so many different things. Um, and these are just some of the topics that I was that came came up in as I was researching this over the last week. And um, but this is the core idea that, that you need to know is like <clears throat> they, um, you configure it to these different um, email services, they're going to ultimately post the email to your Rails app, it creates this inbound email object and stores it in active storage. And then it keeps it there for 30 days where you, and you have this, this inbound email object that you can work with to then um, route it to different mailboxes and then those different mailboxes you can process the email and I'll take you guys through it a little bit um, that's kind of like the overview um, one of the great things about this is you know why why is this really worthwhile and part of it is you, you've already been able to process emails and do things after an email comes in for instance on on AWS You'll use simple email service. You can have a hook that every time an email comes in, you send it to a Lambda function, which analyzes it, and then you can do different things from there, or you can put it to S3, and every time an object gets created, you can use the lifecycle methods there to then do an action. But what you have with this is you have the full domain model of your Rails application, so you can do all those active record tricks that he just showed to traverse the different models in, in your application and, and take actions based on those emails. <coughs> um, it does, yeah, like I said, it uses active storage to store the original for 30 days. Um, it's asynchronous by nature, so um, it's not gonna slow things down. You, it just does this quick creation of, of the inbound email and then it does a background job, which eventually sends it to be routed and processed. Um, and then uh, it's nice that you can just plan on getting rid of, of, the, uh, of the emails via incineration. And this is something, this, this whole idea of storing it temporarily in active storage is something that I've come up against a lot of times in like ETL situations where you have this big payload of data that's going to come into your Rails application. You need to 
store it short term for a little while after you do some some mutations to the to the data, and then later you need to process it more. So it never made sense to really store it in the database. You can keep it forever. We 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 try to store it in Redis for a little while and then get rid of it. But this is great because you store it temporarily with active storage, and then it's set to delete after 30 days. It's this perfect like intermediary point where you can store big payloads of data that you later need to process. And uh, so as we go through this, I really think about going through the, just how they approach this thing, because the approach is worth a lot when you're designing a complex system that has to deal with big data payloads and asynchronous processing. This, you can just kind of look at, at the way they do this. Of course, it's Rails comes with some really sweet little generators. That's all you need, you need to do. You do an action mailbox install, and then this says generate mailbox reply, but you would generate as many mailboxes that you want that needs to process emails differently, right? Replies, forwards. Um, so you need to be on real six, you do the install. Of course, it's gonna install active storage if you don't have it, and then you migrate, and then you choose a service provider or use Postfix. Is anyone using Postfix or XM? Because it's, I use it, but it's pretty old school, and I thought it was kinda, do you use it a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you're using old school server setups, which is what I like, instead of containers or whatever, you, you use Postfix. So this integrates really easily with that. All you need to do to configure it is uh, choose your email provider, which I'll show you who they are, create a password, and then if you don't change the incineration timeline, then it's gonna delete these emails after 30 days. It's got um, ingress adapters for all the major email service players. You got um, SendGrid, Mailgun, Mandrel, there's MailChimp's person, um, Postmark, and then for the old school cats, you got Postfix and XM. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, the ingress, we won't, don't really need to get into it that much, but basically it, every email service is gonna send this post request to your Rails app a little bit differently. So these ingresses they create to negotiate that exchange. Um, but ultimately it comes down to a post request to your app with a payload. And uh, they had Amazon simple email service, but they took it out. Supposedly it's coming back in the next release. And this is just an example of, of what it comes down to. These are the, the routes that are drawn. And you can see that they just create these different, um, it's the inbound email create action. And it's gonna be different depending on who your email service provider is, right? Yeah. Um, the, each one of the controllers, excuse me. Um, see, you can see that at the beginning we're, we're we're inheriting from action controller base. So this is our standard controller base here, just like all of your controllers. And then um, the, well, all this, this abstract class, this, this parent class does is make sure you're authenticated and you're configured correctly, and then it passes it on to your inbound email creator. <laughs> you're going to, um, this is an example from Mandrel, what, what they're, they're in, and, and they're creating this action mailbox inbound object. And that's really your key object is this, this action mailbox inbound email. And when you think about then this class, which is um, really core to, core to the whole process, and they, they, they just went about this class in such a Rails way. There's, there's some really just textbook things that they did, which I wanted to show you guys. It's based on the mail gem, so you can see it, it, it turns the, uh, the mail into an object that you can navigate to get any of the decoded information, any of the pieces like that. You can see how it's easy to access just from the methods there. Um, but then I love this class, like you require mail at the top, and then um, you see it has one attached raw email, that's your active storage, really, clearly written out, enum the status. And then you have these concerns included at the top there where you isolate out different pieces of logic so that they um, can, can be applied to, to different 
situation, but also they're, they're logically isolated. And in those modules, you have a couple callbacks. Um, you have, after, after you create it, it, you've created the email, then it puts the job in. So you create the background job, and then the background job runs, it's gonna route it, it's gonna process it, and then it's gonna update it. If it updates it successfully, then it deletes the email or schedules it for delete. So I thought that's just a really kind of these concerns are such like old friends now mixed into your classes. And um, these call, this is a really tasteful use of callbacks, I think, just a, a couple which do everything you do. Um, then you created the background job runs, right? Um, and uh, so the background job runs, and then it's going to route to one of your mailboxes. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this routing because I find it a little bit um, strange, the, the syntax. And, and that doesn't have any documentation. I want to look up kind of that syntax is strange. Um, but really what it comes down to is then is uh, the processing of the email. That's where all of the all the action happens. So in your mailboxes, you you do you can do these, which are kind of like before actions or after actions in your controller before the processing. And a lot of times, um, it's something like this where before we process this email, we want to go into our domain model, find the user by their email, make sure they're a real user, then then take action. And in this process method, we, we have the full active record power domain to do whatever we need to do. And so um, it, it has, uh, so you can, so you can um, put in filters, you can put in after filters. Um, the email has a status, it's either pending, processing, or one of these three outcomes. Uh, you can bounce them if, they, if you don't find the user in your, for any reason, you can bounce the email. Um, and yeah, when you then you you get to this process point, this is kind of the last slide really, but it's um that's a lot of, of preamble and, and what makes up this framework, but it really comes down to how you process these emails. And when you're in this method, you know, that's when you can apply all your business logic. That's where you um, are able to then do great things with processing emails. And I, I think about this as just a, a new input source to applications. You've had you know, you can use the, the user input from, from the application itself, but now you can read through any email you want and apply that to your, um, to your application. And it's a, it's a huge source for, for a lot of different things. I mean, you could parse through and look for the word receipt and then file this as a receipt. You could um, pick out keywords. You could try to send it into some yeah, language processing, figure out what they intend to happen, all sorts of things, um, more than just asking some VIP to, to re reply to a discussion so you can save in the database. But I do think it's the beginning of a, it's the beginning of a lot of possibilities. Um, there, I think a lot of different use cases could be done with this. Also, when you think about you can process the email, then you could forward it on, you could edit it, forward it on, you can you can, this could serve as like a logical brain for a bunch of emails coming in and out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, for more information, Go Rails did a video on it, Drifting Ruby did a video on it, the Mail Gem's really good, and then uh, the usual sources there. Uh, good. All right. Thanks. Thanks.